Okay, so we're going to talk about a parable first. A parable is a short story designed to illustrate or teach a truth, religious principle, or a moral lesson. Everybody hopefully knows what a moral is. If you've ever heard somebody say, the moral of the story is, you should always lock the door behind you. That's what we mean when we say a moral lesson. Uh, parables seem simple on the surface, but when you dig deeper, there are hidden meanings that teach important truths. And so a lot of times symbolism and metaphors are involved. They are small stories with really big ideas behind them. And you'll find many of them in the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, any other religious books that you read because a lot of times the lessons are spiritual. All right, so the characteristics... Um, are pretty simple. One, it's a narrative, so it's a story. It has a setting, describes an action, and shows the results. The big ones I think here involves moral dilemmas, and we're trying to get away from this. Uh, involves moral dilemmas. The characters might make questionable decisions that other people wouldn't really agree with. The character suffers the consequences, and Everything, everything symbolizes something else. The characters, their actions, the settings, all symbolize something. And it uses analogies or comparisons to teach a truth. And just in case you've forgotten what an analogy is, I'm sure you've done them in vocab before. It's like apple is to orange as... A Dog is to cat. Right. It shows the relationships between something. Okay, so this is an example of a parable from the Bible. There's tons of parables in the Bible. This is the one of the sower. Um, okay, so it says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So this next picture shows or illustrates, I guess, um, what that parable is saying. Um, and so you can talk about what this particular parable might symbolize by talking about, let's say, your faith, your religious faith. Um, if your faith is just kind of thrown around on the path, then it's going to get eaten up quickly. If your faith is not, if it doesn't have strong, deep roots, then it can be, um, what do you say? What do you do with a weed? Torn out. Torn out. Yeah, Torn food. out easily. And then obviously you don't want your faith to be um, shadowed by thorns. But if your faith is growing on good soil, then it will stay. All right, so waves in the ocean. All right, this is another one. Where was this one from? This is just from a website that has a bunch of parables. But Mitch Album is a famous author. And this one, you could probably argue that it has a spiritual undertone to it, but this is more of just teaching a moral lesson. So I guess you could call it a secular parable. All right. So a little wave was bobbing along in the ocean, having a grand old time. He's enjoying the wind and the fresh air until he notices the other waves in front of him crashing against the shore. My God, this is terrible, the wave says. Look what's going to happen to me. Then along comes another wave. It sees the first wave looking grim, and it says to him, Why do you look so sad? The first wave says, You don't understand. We're all going to crash. All of us waves are going to be nothing. Isn't this terrible? The second wave says, No, you don't understand. You're not a wave. You're part of the ocean. So if we think about the symbolism in this parable, we, the waves would represent people, and the ocean would represent, it could be like uh, your family, it could be your community, it could be society, the world, whatever. But it's just talking about how no man is an island, and we all work together so that nobody is swallowed up. It's the big picture, not your individual self. Okay, and then this one is from the book called the Torah, which is the... I believe the holy book of Judaism. 
the Jewish faith. So here we go. The essence of the Torah. The parable tells the story of a man who journeys from the mountains to the city. In the mountains, the man grows wheat and eats it raw. In the city, he tries bread for the first time and enjoys it very much. Next, he tries cakes, which he likes, and then pastries, which he loves. When he learns that the pastries are made from wheat, he begins to gloat. He described himself to the city people as a master of bread, cakes, and pastries because he eats their essence raw, whole grains of wheat. Okay, so in this parable, wheat, bread, cakes, and pastries symbolize four different levels of religious knowledge, and specifically knowledge of the religious book, the Torah. So, symbolically speaking, wheat is the simplest level of faith. At this level, one knows the stories and the laws in the Torah, just basic understanding. The bread, cakes, and pastries represent the three higher stages of understanding. Bread represents moral understanding, cakes represent spiritual understanding, and pastries symbolize mystical understanding, the highest level at which readers of the Torah feel a close understanding of God's presence. Now you can go through each of the different religious books and find parables. We found one from the Quran. Um, there are Buddhist parables also, but they were really long, and I didn't know how to fit them onto the slides. So if there's a particular uh, parable. If, if there's religion, a religion out there, there's probably a parable um, from that religion. So you can look and find them and explore. Yeah, have fun. All right, so then we have tall tales. Tall tales are exaggerated, unreliable stories. They're highly imaginative. They often explain the origin of lakes, mountains, and canyons. A lot of times they're set in the Wild West. Uh, many times the main character or the hero of the tall tale is of unrealistic size, strength, or skill. And so they are spun around some legendary heroes. These are just a sampling of um, characters Good that are... American ones. Yeah, they're tall tales. So you've probably heard of Paul Bunyan, the giant lumberjack. Um, you probably... I don't know if you've heard of Mike Fink or not. He's Mike not, Fink's new to me. Okay, so the rowdy Mississippi River keel boatman. There's a story about him. We're going to talk about some of these this week, as many as we can get through. Davy Crockett is the backwoods Tennessee marksman. Um, I'm sure you've heard of him. Captain Stormalong, who I really hadn't heard of, but kind of an interesting summary of his story here. His ship was driven by a hurricane across the Isthmus of Panama, digging the Panama Canal in the process. Johnny Appleseed, everybody's heard of him. He planted apple orchards from the east coast to the western frontier. And then Pecosville taught a bronco how to buck. Now, some of them, like, some of them can be real people, but it's the exaggerated tales that go along with them, uh, which make them the tall tales. I don't think Captain Strong Storm Along is real, though. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes there's argument about whether or not the person actually existed. All right, so fairy tales. A story usually for children about elves, hobgoblins, I like that word, dragons, fairies, or other magical creatures. Now, the common elements of these are uh, basically a Disney show. Enchantments, happy endings, once upon a time, happily ever after. Uh, it's got to be a fictional story, far-fetched events. Usually there's royalty, an evil villain, um, good, innocent character. There's sometimes castles. There's usually some poverty. And most of the time there's talking animals. Um, so what comes to mind, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Mike the Knight, Sophia the First, um, Cinderella, pretty much anything that you can think of. All right, and then finally we have fables. Fables are short stories. They typically have animals as characters, talking animals specifically, and they convey a moral to the story. So they're similar to parables, but parables don't have talking animals, and fables don't necessarily have like a spiritual uh, lesson to them. So some famous examples... You have the ants and the grasshopper. In this fable, the ants saved food for the winter, and the grasshopper did not. The moral of the story, after you read it, is it's best to prepare for the days of necessity. And the hare and the tortoise, this is about a rabbit and a turtle that race. The rabbit is so fast, he gets smug, and the slower turtle wins the race. The 
moral is slow and steady wins the race. And we're going to show you a clip from, well, they played it during the Super Bowl. Um, you might recognize it that uses this tortoise and the hare fable. A lot of times fables are just one short paragraph. Hey, good luck, hare. Ah, you better have a jet back under that turtle. <laughs> it's tortoise, actually. All right, bask in my glory. On your mark. Get set. <laughs> Later, Roadkill. <laughs> On your left. Coming through. Hey, hey deal me in, guys. Hmm. Plot twist. Slow and steady, my... Introducing the hair-raising power and performance of the Mercedes AMG GT. It's no fairy tale. Okay, we just wanted to show, um, that's a quick little, technically that is a fable. And at the end they say, not a fairy tale. And they're right, it's not a fairy tale. It is a fable because it has that moral lesson. Alright, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, make sure you complete all your notes.